What's up, y'all? It's your boy Adrian, and I'm um, here with my first reaction video, y'all. Today, I will be reacting to Russia. Um, Russia opens up its vault to re so we're gonna see what this bot. Let's get into the video. I ain't gonna hold y'all for too long. Boom. <laughs> have you ever seen or heard of biblical icons where Jesus or the Virgin Mary have dark skin, or even Abraham or King David? Then look beyond Europe. Russia has opened its vaults to reveal biblical icons featuring darker skinned figures. In case this is making you wonder if Russia has its own twist on biblical figures, the answer is a no. This is not the case at all. This is, a matter of fact, as real as the untouched horizon of time. These icons aren't just artistic anomalies. These hold deep meanings of hidden shaded truths, sparking serious curious questions about history and faith, representation, and the unexpected corners of religious art. Pay close attention, amazing people. You are just about to hear it today, like it is, in this video. Before we continue, kindly endeavor to hit that like button as a way of supporting our works. Share with your families and friends to keep spreading our eye-opening black narrative and subscribe to stay put for more while you help in building the rising membership of this channel. We appreciate your support. First and foremost, Jesus, Mark chapter 4 verse 22. For there is nothing hidden which shall not be manifested, neither anything kept secret that would not be brought to light. For centuries, the most common <laughs> image of Jesus Christ, at least in Western cultures, has been that of a bearded, fair-skinned man with long... We're getting off to a very funny start. But, y'all, y'all gotta know, like, come on now, like, so now Russia is all of a sudden opening up this vault, and now they're revealing all of these old, ancient, biblical, black, you know, photos and stuff. It's cool. Well, different from how he has long been portrayed. The good book offers few clues about Christ's physical appearance. Most of what we know about Jesus comes from the first four books of the New Testament, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. According to the Gospels, Jesus was a Jewish man born in Bethlehem and raised in the town of Nazareth in Galilee, formerly Palestine, now northern Israel, during the first century. We know that Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his ministry, so tells us the Bible book of Luke chapter 3 verses 23. But the Bible tells us virtually nothing about what he looked like, except that he didn't stand out in any particular way. The historical Jesus likely had the brown eyes and skin of other first century Jews from Galilee, a region in biblical Israel. But no one knows exactly what Jesus looked like. There are no known images of Jesus from his lifetime. And while the Old Testament kings these are those rhombohedron crystals in your pineal gland. When those crystals become electrically activated, all of a sudden they start calling. Saul and David are explicitly called tall and handsome in the Bible. There is little indication of Jesus' appearance in the Old or New Testaments. In addition, when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane before the crucifixion, Judas Iscariot had to point Jesus out to his soldiers among the disciples, presumably because they all appeared similar to one another. But the words of the Bible in itself did not hint on the reasons behind their similarities. Whether they were white or black, or why or how they looked too similar, it did not tell. Considering these events, one is made to actually wonder, were these words deliberately expunged from the Bible to hide certain glaring truths, or did the writers of the good book of the Gospel fail to discuss these things? However, the portrayal of Jesus as a white European man has come under renewed scrutiny during this from Russia. For some time now, the recentness of this event has got everyone talking in wonderment. Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided to move one of Russia's holiest icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. 
This arises a debate around Putin's growing reliance on the church. Emphasizing on the importance of the holy icon, Putin ordered Andrei Rublev's trinity be transferred to the Russian Orthodox Church from Moscow's Tretyakov Gallery for a year. Exactly. The relocation of Russia's most well-known icon highlights how closely the war has... So, they're removing the, um, all of those old, old photos from inside of the, like, the old churches and all that over there in Russia and stuff. They're removing them out of the churches. Because they saying like, uh uh, even the people over there like, uh uh, this ain't right. Mm. Sure, we done found out like the real deal. Like, yeah, this is not right. We want more answers. Yeah, we finna put in what really supposed to be in here. So that's what they finna get ready and show us like what they getting ready to like, you know, put inside of the, you know, what they gonna be showing people. As intertwined politics well, well, and religion. The unveiling of these icons <laughs> is a powerful testament to the enduring strength of truth. The authenticity of these paintings compels us to reevaluate our understanding of the past, particularly regarding the presence and representation of black figures. For centuries, these figures may have been shrouded in obscurity, but their rediscovery sheds light on previously untold stories, standing as a challenge to long held us. Yeah, I gotta pause there. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I'm pause there real quick. Assumptions, prompting us to rewrite history with a more inclusive lens. Many Russian icons were destroyed or sold abroad by agents of the Soviet government. Some were hidden to avoid destruction or were smuggled out of the country. Since the fall of communism, numbers of icon painting studios have again opened and are painting in a variety of styles for the local and international market. Many older, hidden icons have also been retrieved from hiding or brought back from overseas. The Castile San Angelo in Rome is currently hosting an exhibition of 40 Russian icons that have left their country for the first time. They are pieces of art that were hidden after the October Revolution of 1917 mm. in order to protect them from anti-religious destruction. It's the first time that a large number of Russian icons have come here to Italy. In addition, here are a dozen examples that have never before been moved. They appear for the first time in our catalog. Mm -hmm. Icons are usually painted on wood and meant to represent saints or sacred elements. They say since 1917, meaning it's 2024, so what even made them open the vault? You know now, mm -hmm. and then they bring in like, like they say, all these people like that's coming over here, and it's crazy. There's something going on. Something finna go on, and they trying to put everything back how it was. Mm. That's how, that's what's going on. The Orthodox tradition considers them as if they were the gospel, in. inspirations of God through the hand of the artist. Their deep symbolism is reflected from the meaning of icon as a representation or vision from another world. The wood evokes the Holy Cross through its gold background, divine light, and the cloth attached to the wood evokes the cloth that covered the body of Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, they have a great importance and a fundamental recognition in Russia because the icons represent for Russia what the pyramids represent for Egypt or the temples to the Greeks. The exhibition shows icons ranging from the 15th century until the early 20th century. It's a rare opportunity to see the religious soul of Russia through its... There's been so much debate going on around the world of late bestirred by the unveiling of these black biblical icons. Some tend to think that the icons had blackened over time due to age, while Boy, if you don't get others say that the blackness of the icons has nothing to do with age, but are a measure of accuracy meant to depict the actual color of the skins of the people painted. Because they were black people, says Robert Rubin. Why didn't their clothes change to black in those paintings or all of the paintings? The true Israelis were black-skinned people, not white. Likewise, the ancient Egyptians. The Reshet structure in Mauritania is also the location of Atlantis. Russian man said, why didn't, if, if that's the case, since they saying that it was since the paint and da, 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 it changed like black and all that, guess what? Just like that man had said, shoot, if that's the case, the clothes and everything on the paintings would have changed black. You know what I mean? So... 
They painted black on them pictures. That's what it was. Americans did not change their paintings just as other countries did. They simply kept the true paintings and iconography. Look up ancient maps and you will see that the Kingdom of Judah was later located in West Africa. The Jewish nation was destroyed by Titus. Millions of Jews fled into Africa. They ended up in the west of Africa. From there, they were sold as slave to almost every part of the world. Do you think the hatred for black people is just normal or a coincidence? No, it was because they, Israelis, did not keep the commandments of God. Moses informed them of the blessings and curses as we can see in the Bible book of Deuteronomy. God told them they will lose that land to people whom they did not know if they disobey him. The hatred for the black children of Ham and Shem is because the children of Shem have mixed up with the children of Ham. They are both black-skinned. The prime target of this hate is actually the children of Shem. Shem is being punished for his disobedience to his God. Another insightful one from Johnson here says, because black <coughs> people were the people in the Bible that the Americans turned white when they told the stories to us. But Russians didn't get the memo. They went off for real history. Songs of Solomon. Chapter 1 verse 5. Revelations chapter 1 verse 15, go check it out. It's in the text, it's not because of a candle or anything else these people are talking about. In that case, the whole picture would be black, not just the face and the hands. They are meant to be black because they were black people. This great USA is also a great deceiver. And so many people inherit the wrong lesson from their great grandparents and their parents to the point where it's so deep that the lie is made true when the real answer is really just right there. But you never look because why would you and not saying that they blaming the parents or the grandparents. They're just saying that they didn't have as much, you know, knowledge and they didn't have all this information to know that they were. Yeah, they wasn't. They didn't. Well, you know, they didn't know. I'm pretty sure they did know, but they I don't know. It's hard to explain. I don't know. The Russian well, good thing that we didn't are stop learning. there. No. Russia continues with its biblical historical revelations with President Putin at the foremost front, championing the cause. Russia has opened its cellars to reveal remarkable paintings of Jesus dating back to the 1400s. By Father Vladimir Ivanov. This is a book that is highly coveted by different circles mm -hmm. it, because it has the black icons. It has the um, history of black people in places like Russia in um, Italy, in places all over Europe. This book can range from 1300 to $3,000. So it's not an easy book to get. I actually borrowed this book from a friend, you know. But this book has a lot of um, interesting depictions in it. A lot of them pertaining to the, to the Bible. Like right here, this is the Transfiguration of Christ. And you see it's it's black people inside of the in caves, I believe, and what it looks like. It's black people in the whole picture, but this is um knowledge that escapes black people here in America. Um it's definitely something Giants. that we would never see or never hear about in the educational system. Now, I'm pretty sure there's people that are um, black history um, college students majoring in black history or world history, and they've never seen nothing like this before. At least not from the standpoint of Europe, you know. Point of Europe, <laughs> you know. That's crazy. This is the crucifixion of Christ. And in it, we see um, angels, black angels. Um, the people surrounding him are black. Um, it's very interesting because the images that we see are contrary to what we have known our whole lives or what we have been taught our whole lives like I, i'll say it again like these type of images of antiquity escape black people here in america and i can say all people for in general just people in general 
Indians don't know. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of Caucasian people and people of all nationalities that don't know the extent that black people covered the earth. Oh my gosh. Okay, y'all, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pause it right there. I've been supposed to pause it. Thank y'all for tuning in. Get this video to at least 50 likes. I ain't even going to say 100. I'm going to say 50. And I'll continue with the part two. We could continue like with the video. We can finish the video. And thank y'all so much for watching the video and being here with me. Peace.